Okay, so we are back on the build. And now what we have to do is make some modifications to our IBC tank. And this build is for the taller version of the tank. So it's the one that has six squares of plastic in it. Um, if you're gonna use a shorter one, you'll obviously have to make the cradle entirely different. So just keep that point in mind. This is for a tall tank. I think it's a 330 gallon one because it gives you more capacity of feed and more space for the pigs. So the first thing we have to do is take these two bars out of the top. We can lay the tank over and then we have to pull the plastic out of the cage. So hit these up, pull these bars out, set them to the side for now. We'll uh, be using them again soon. And so what we're gonna do is slide the tank out and cut a groove on this side. That's what will be in the bottom of the cradle for the feed to fall in. And then on the other side, we're gonna cut out a square, which will be on the top. And that's where you can fill the feeder, either with a grinder mixer or a grinder cart, if you got that, or maybe you're just bucketing it in there like some of us have to do. It happens. So we're gonna designate this side as the, uh, the bottom. So we can just flop this thing over and it will be sitting in the cradle like this. So this is going to be our top where we need to fill it with feed. It is come over here. This is going to be our uh, fill area from here to here. So we're just going to mark it off so we know where the plastic cuts have to be made. And we'll do that on both sides. So we're coming down, we got the first bar here from the top, down to the second one, and these are going to get cut above this horizontal one. So here, 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 and the same on the other side. That piece can just come off and be thrown away. Just going to pull the tank out. Sometimes I like to mark the cage too, just so I know where to cut and where not to cut. Cut this stuff out, move it on. Got my trusty grinder here, so we'll cut the top out of the cage. We got the marks that we put on here before. We know where to cut, where not to cut. Safety first. All right. That's the only part of the cage that you should be cutting out. So I remember we marked off this is the spot that corresponds to our opening there. Now what we need is an extra flap of plastic that you'll see to um, mount onto our little wooden platform that we're gonna put there. So we're actually gonna come up about two inches on these corners. And that's where we're gonna draw our line. Like that, and when you cut it, you will cut this all the way down, but you'll be leaving this strip of plastic here. Same on the other side. Again, giving it about two inches of a little flap there. Like that. And then we're just gonna connect these lines. You could bust out the uh, string line if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna eyeball it. And like that. All right, so now we're gonna cut this chunk of plastic out, then we'll flip the tank around and cut out the groove for the uh, bottom part of the feeder. Just remember, safety first. All right, you might have to trim up the edges a little bit. Sharp knife, need that. As you can see, we have our two flaps here. And so this is what will screw to our little wooden frame up on the top to secure the side of your tank in place. All right, so now flip it around to this other side. And this is where we're gonna cut out a strip along here for the feed to fall into our cradle. Let me grab a tape measure. 
just kind of identify where the center point is there. Put a little line beneath kind of your, your reference point. And you want to come about two to two and a half inches off of that line. Uh, let's go with two and a quarter. You can always cut more away later. Hard to add back some. So something like this. And then I'm going to come in about four inches from uh, three and a half, three inches maybe from the end of the tank right there. So we're not going to cut this section over here because this is holding the corner of the tank together and we don't want feed spilling out the side of the container. So we'll mark the other side. So it all makes sense here in a minute. My high speed uh, marking ruler here because my other one is bent and in the trash. All right, and then for here, just mark that down. So this is the section that you'll cut out right here. <clears throat> Again, it's better to keep it a little bit narrow and maybe have to come back at some point in the future and cut it a little bit wider if your feed's not flowing through very well, as opposed to cutting it out really fat and then your tank is just unloading and the pigs are spilling the feed everywhere. You wanna make the pigs work for it a little bit. Cut this little strip out. here cut that out boom back there we already did the metal cut here so now we can just put these two back together just like that flip my tank around just like that so you can see how everything's lining up here. We'll be building a little wooden box in here. Probably going to uh, adjust these plastic cuts just a little bit. And we'll build out this frame, but you can see the groove down in the bottom there. That's where the feed will be going down into the trough. All right, so once you have your tank back in, you can take a razor knife and maybe a torch and trim the plastic up so it's nice and flush to both sides of your uh, cage that's left. And some tanks are going to be different measurements, so you'll just have to go off of whatever your measurements are. But you probably see on these tabs that are left, how I cut out a little bit of a tab here. And uh, this is where our box frame will set in. So you want to cut that out of the way. And what you want to do is take your torch. You're going to heat this plastic up and uh, fold it over. Just gonna make it a little bit easier once you put the wooden frame in. Bend on it, same up here. Make sure you don't light yourself on fire. So you wanna measure the size of your hole here. Uh, this particular one is 23. I think by 21 is what it came out to be. So you just frame up a little box. This is using uh, one by six. You can use two by six, whatever you have. Just frame up a box that's basically gonna fit in that hole just like that. So it's kind of resting on the bars on both sides. And then you can bring that plastic tab up in there and then we're just going to attach that with screws. And that's all we're going to do to mount the box to this. You could put a screw from here into the metal if you'd like, but we found that's really not necessary. The plastic's enough to keep this thing where you want it. Got some um, one and a quarter inch um, sharp point lathe screws. That's what we're using here. Basically something that's got a little bit of a, a flat head on it. And we're going to bring that plastic up and just start pinning this in. I think the, uh, the term for this would be fit to form. So you see just with one screw on each side, pretty firm, but we'll probably put about five in this total to lock this thing in. All right, so we brought the cradle out of the barn. Our tank is ready to go. We're ready to flop it on there. Gonna make sure you've got the uh, downward edge here. 
bring it right up to the edge, flip this puppy over and on. Something right about there. For the most part, the tank is just sitting in the cradle. That way, if you ever need to take it off, it's very easy just to flip it back off again. Basically the same way that we set it down in there. And we just need to put our little lid on top, put the straps on, she's done. All right, so we got a 10 foot strap here. Unroll this little puppy. We're gonna bring it through the top here and around the frame and just hook it underneath. It's not a big deal wherever you strap it, but you're just connecting the two together so that they'll stay put. Bring it around this side. Weave it back through. And we've got our ratchet here. Slap that puppy in there. Same deal. Come up under here to the uh, frame again. And just gonna snug that down right there. Now, keep the end of this strap because we use this to tie on our little uh, roof. So, buddy. Like that. If you get a lighter, you can melt that end on and it'll be good to go. Same thing for the other side. Gonna bring it through here, connect it up underneath. So what this does, is this keeps your tank from coming off the cradle when your uh, feed is low or if you're moving it around while empty. Boom. Secure now for the cradle. Good to go. The very last thing that we have is to put some kind of lid on this. Now you could use a piece of sheet metal, small tarp, whatever you got laying around. But what we have a lot of are the tops of these IVC tanks because we cut them out to use for our bulk feed storage for like our lactating feed and chicken feed, other things that's not being automatically dispersed. So we keep these tops and they work really well for this task. Sit up there, little buddy. We've got the two extra pieces of strap. You can use whatever you want, but I like to uh, get the maximum efficiency we can out of a project and the materials that we've got. Just kind of center it up as best you can. And then we're just going to tie these to the tank. Same deal over on this side. We've got two short bungee cords here. And I should have said that before, I just drilled some one inch holes in these. You can do that with a hole saw or whatever you got. But you're just going to hook onto these and then just pull it down to wherever is nice and snug. So it's a little bit loose, cinch these knots in a little bit tighter. And just like that, we are done. These covers, uh, we've never had one blow off, gone through hurricanes, high wind um, thunderstorms with them, and they stay on and work really well to shield the top of your tank from any rain. And then obviously whenever you want to fill it, you just pop the bungee off, just flip the thing over, let it flop on the side, and you can dump your feed in. So we are done with the build, ladies and gentlemen. This is our farm builder feeder, holds about 1,500 pounds of feed. Um, we found that about one per 25 pigs is a good ratio. So if you've got a bigger group, you might want to add more in. Um, but they work really well in the field trials that we've done over the last several years. If you uh, download the PDF with the build instructions on this, we'll have the sheets with what you need to buy, what the rough costs are. But really, depending on the cost of your tank, sometimes you can get these for free. Sometimes you got to pay 150 bucks for them. But you can be in the pig bulk feeder business for easily less than $300, maybe even lower if um, you're able to scrounge some of the materials and components from, I don't know, construction sites, where, wherever, wherever you can scrounge it up. This is a do-it-yourself pig feeder. We hope you enjoyed the video, found some value in it. If you build one of these things, put a picture out on the socials, tag us with it. Yeah, we love to see stuff out there in the wild. Until next time, we'll see you out there in the field. Never to get after it.